wanted to do a uh, kind of a kind of overview of a project I worked on a couple of months back with a friend. Um, it's this um, Raspberry Pi powered retro Pi um, arcade cabinet. You know, it does SNES, Nintendo, MAME, all that stuff. Um, I've actually built probably three or four arcade machines over the years, and I wanted something this time that was smaller, didn't take up so much room. And so I kind of saw some ideas online. This one actually is hanging um, on a French cleat. So you can just walk up and pick it up off the wall. And when I look up inside, I'll show you how that's hanging. Uh, so it's basically all MDF. Um, I've got some decals or decals, depending on where you are in the world, that I cut out on my uh, Cricut uh, vinyl cutter over there. Um, this is just some old 32 inch TV. Um, it's runs at about 720p. You know, I think that's what 1280 by 720 or whatever. Um, these the speakers inside of here are actually the speakers loose from the TV. Um, down in the the uh, comments, I'll link to the build thread, and you can see how I constructed the frame and all of this stuff. Uh, these are just some eight dollar speaker grill covers. Um, same thing, some $8 cup holders, the uh, button and joysticks, I'll show the controller underneath in a second. That came as a set. They plug into, they each plug into their own little control board, which are tied together, and they connect USB into the Raspberry Pi, and that was maybe like 50 bucks on Amazon. Um, <laughs> I didn't intend to have these buttons on the side, but I found that um, this, uh, right here interrupts the power strip I have inside. So this essentially turns the power strip on and off, which gives power to everything. Um, and then I found out that I have to have a button to turn my TV on. Um, and then my computer or my TV doesn't stay on the same channel when it comes back on. So this pulls up the channel list and this lets me go down to HDMI and then bam. So. Not how I was in, intended, but it works. Um, then here, these are plugged in directly to the Pi, um, to the Ethernet port and a USB port if I just want an easy way to do that. At, right now it's connected Wi-Fi, um, and that's how you send games to it and everything. So let's look inside before I turn it on. Um, so up there, you can see uh, the French cleat system you can see the uh, lag bolts. That's the piece that's connected to studs. And then the piece above it is tied into the, uh, the frame. So it's literally just floating on there. Um, there's the power strip. There's the Raspberry Pi. There's a powered USB hub because the Raspberry Pi 3 can't handle powering the, uh, these USB boards. Um, on its own so that's how I'm doing that and then all the, the buttons so now the cool thing about retro pie is it has configurable startup movies so you can make the startup look like anything you want within any like mp4 file so first turn the thing on turn the TV on the buttons light up We'll see if it remembers what channel it was on. It doesn't. So I just got to go down to HDMI. Now obviously you don't need that if you don't want it, but it's kind of cool while it's turning on. Um, I also have an MP3 that starts playing here, but I have it turned down. Uh, now this front end is something you can totally skin. There's like a hundred different ones. I just thought that this was pretty cool, kind of stylized. So, and then I don't know if you can hear it, but 
there's music playing. I usually have it much louder. And this is, I think it's player one coin, player one start, player two coin, player two start. But these buttons also do special things, which lets you get in and, you know, configure all this stuff. Um, you know, change how it looks and all that kind of stuff. So pretty cool. You know, and you can look up YouTube videos on uh, RetroPie. If you push both buttons at the same time, it kicks you out of the game. Uh, you can even skip through the systems like this. So, anyways, I'll put some links below. Pretty fun little project.